In this episode of Cycling Tours, I will explore the cycling network within the southern sector of Burdok. Greetings everyone, Transit Evolution here and welcome to the episode of Cycling Tours featuring the southern part of Burdok. This video will start at Baduk and end at Tanamera MRT Station and I will kickstart the video with a rather limited cycling path network in Baduk South starting with what we have along the 6 lane Baduk South Road a needlessly wide road with a rather bizarre cycle path indeed Unlike most off-road cycling paths which follow the roadside pretty closely the one along Baduk South Road appears to deviate very far from the roadway weaving around the greenery surrounding the housing blocks Already from the start, the cycling route is not very direct, requiring many needless turns and changes in elevation. There are also parts like this where you have to crane your neck to look out for vehicles coming from all sorts of directions. The way it meets a bus stop is rather odd. Rather than bypassing the bus stop, the path borrows the covered lingway leading to 18 Badok South Road, maximizing pedestrian cyclist conflicts rather than minimizing them. Further on, we briefly see it turn into a shared path before it merges back with the footpath, which was, rather strangely, uncomfortably close to a roadway with a 60km per hour speed limit as I approach an assessed road. To continue along the cycling route, I will have to make this very abrupt left turn, leading me onto a shared track which is just a path built as part of the housing precinct. At this point, you kind of get the idea of the deficiencies of the pathway along this road, so I guess I shall now move on to talking about this vicinity. In those early days, Bedok was truly desolate with respect to the city centre of Singapore, and it was thought by some that it's a bad place to move to, that something was wrong with the town. Fortunately, to reduce the effect of living far from what is considered civilization at the time, the earliest two neighbourhoods of Bedok were built directly south of the main road, a new highway by the name of New Upper Changi Road. Just for context, if you haven't watched the other video, Bedok was the fifth new town in Singapore, developed in the late 1970s with Amokyo and Clementi. This new town was planned to have 40,000 units, housing 220,000 residents. Many lessons learned in previous towns were incorporated here. Some examples include raising the level of ground floor flats to prevent passerbys from looking in, building rectangular rooms instead of square ones, having shorter and wider corridors for privacy and play, and refraining from building two slab blocks parallel and close to each other. Plenty of recreational facilities were designed into the town from the start, from 32 playgrounds to seven multi-purpose courts, and there even used to be a cycling path network connecting the entire town, though it seemed that that has been lost as a figment of history. Instead, the modern cycling path network here was built fairly recently, under contract TR127, awarded in 2015. It was announced as part of the Remaking Our Heartlands initiative for the town of East Coast. While originally intended for completion in the first half of 2017, like many cycling infrastructure projects in Singapore, it got delayed, but the 13km network was eventually completed in 2018. At Baduk South Avenue 3, the cycling path switches to the other side of the roadway, wrapping around the Siglap East Public Housing Precinct. This precinct was completed in 1985, quite a while after the rest of the original Baduk New Town was built. We will get a more typical cycling path design over here, which is still not ideal, but at least the route that bikes are supposed to use is more direct.
passing Bedok South Horizon, an even newer public housing precinct that was completed in 2021, the shared path ends. I'm just going to make a loop around these two precincts by travelling along Upper East Coast Road, where things start to become a mess as I approach the construction work site of Bedok South MRT Station, part of Stage 5 of the Thompson East Coast Line. Path diversions will require me to travel directly next to the precinct centre, 152A Bedok South Road, and then follow the periphery of Siglap Community Centre. These are some temporary path diversions, which may or may not exist by the time you watch this video, highlighting the constantly evolving landscape of a Singapore that is always under construction. But I have to record this video in 2024 and show you how it truly feels like to cycle under construction conditions, which do exist in Singapore. One thing worth noting about the roads and streets here is that they were renamed quite early in the town's history, back in 1977, to make it easier to translate systematically to different languages. Originally, the road names here would not go by numbers, but by only suffixes. For example, the road which I'm on, Bedok South Avenue 3, used to go by the name of Bedok View, while Bedok South Road, the east-west roadway which I travelled on earlier, goes by the name of Bedok Plain. Up ahead, Bedok South Avenue 2 was renamed from its original name of Bedok Walk. Many other suffixes were originally used for the street names of Bedok. Central, Grove, Crescent, Loop, Plain, Place and Pass. Some of these suffixes would reappear in newer housing towns or in landed housing estates, but at this point in the past, it was probably decided that such a naming convention was probably too eloquent for the layman to use. Now, as I approach New Upper Changi Road, I would like to caution that there are many missing links in the cycling network of Bedok, caused by the strange traffic light configurations along this road, running beneath the east-west line tracks. I cannot cross the road here and have to follow New Upper Changi Road on a narrow shed path to borrow the road crossing at the intersection with Bedok North Avenue 3. Many of the T intersections here have one missing pedestrian crossing typically to enable traffic from the minor road to turn right unimpeded from pedestrians to improve traffic flow. Such minor details will inevitably increase the time spent by pedestrians and pedal cyclists in crossing an intersection.
confronting the linear green at Bedok Precinct, we find ourselves in yet another odd situation where the cycle path gets routed away from the roadway, on the opposite side of a canal. Technically segregated from the footpath, but nobody would want to walk so close to high-speed traffic. So I wind up having to avoid a couple of walkers along the way. Unfortunately for me, things are about to get super awkward for people on wheeled devices. Passing 210 New Upper Changi Road, I'm now heading past the town centre of Bedok, and this is where the cycling path ends. While cycling has been banned in the town centre along the pedestrian malls to my right since 2020, they are still permissible on the footpaths paralleling the road. But we have a bad time cycling here as I approach this car park entrance leading to Block 208A. A signalised crossing is used here, and it is set very far back from the roadway. More critically though, it is extremely narrow for the volume of pedestrians that have to walk through here, let alone active mobility devices. I would like to see this crossing widen at the very least, or perhaps to remove this access road. After all, vehicles can enter the town centre by Bedok North Drive. Alternatively, perhaps we could consider reclaiming road space from New Upper Changi Road, to enhance the pedestrian walking experience here, or to route a cycling path away from the huge masses of pedestrians. Now, even after passing the Bedok Interchange Hawker Centre, I would still have to proceed slowly, as I approach an area of high footfall, where people interchange between the MRT and various bus services here. The mall management also erected dismount and push signs here. Put all these together, and I find myself taking some 5 minutes to travel about 300 meters. That's very slow, no better than walking. So if you are an in-the-town cyclist looking to travel through Bedok Off-Road, it would be more productive to stick to the southern side of New Upper Changi Road instead of the northern side. But even then, the experience would not be ideal. I'm now travelling along the Outdoor Play Corridor, a north-south axis spanning across Bedok, linking Bedok Reservoir Park with the East Coast Park. This part of it near Bedok MRT Station sure does feel like an afterthought though, as I find myself navigating through some narrow covered lingways, which hit its narrowest point next to Acid A. The number of parked bicycles locked around pillars serve as a hint of the dire lack of bicycle parking near the south side of Bedok MRT Station. Only 40 spots are available. There may be more bicycle parking on the north side of the station, but given how inconvenient it has become thanks to all the bylaws discouraging cycling in a pedestrian-heavy area, 
many will be sure to avoid that place. But that's just not how it works. Instead of bylaws, what we truly need here is a commitment to build more bicycle parking and paths that are away from the crowds of people. I also want to take note of the unusual land use pattern here, as you don't typically see such large land plots in Singapore next to an MRT station and town centre, dedicated to manufacturing industries specialising in refrigeration. Companies like Masushita, Fuji and Hitachi were the ones that took the leap of faith to set up factories in Bedok and spur the development of this town by providing jobs for the residents here. But in this day and age, the factories do feel increasingly out of place for a residential town and you have a bustling shopping mall just meters away. Anyways, I shall travel southwards and continue along the outdoor play corridor next to Bedok South Avenue 1, formerly known as Bedok Highway. Passing through Bedok South Road, the shed path dissolves into a few paths arranged in a hexagonal manner, I suppose to inject some degree of playfulness that will be befitting of its name. This is part of a hub by the name of The Fishing Village, which features pavilions in the shape of traditional fishing traps which you can sit in. Many other hubs like this can be found along the way of this play corridor. Here to my left, I pass the former campus of Temasek Junior College, Singapore's second junior college, which has existed since 1977. TJC has just been temporarily relocated to Tampines, as its old campus awaits rebuilding. This was done under a rejuvenation program announced by the Ministry of Education back in 2019. As we move further south, the play corridor looks increasingly unremarkable, sometimes perhaps a little too narrow for what is meant as a shared path. But do pay attention as I approach this intersection with Upper East Coast Road, as I will now need to cross traffic lights twice to get to the opposite corner of the intersection, where the path continues. I guess I will just foreshadow what you will see in the rest of this video because the cycling path network of Bedok proper has been fully traversed at this point. What's left is a rather lengthy stretch of park connectors. I hereby give those of you who are here to strictly see the cycling path network in action the permission to stop watching this video. For those of you who would like to continue though, I will be heading through the East Coast Park to show you the other leg of the Bedok Park connector where we left off in the Northern Sector video at New Upper Changi Road. Once again, I will have to feature the East Coast Park because while most parks have shared paths which are purely recreational in nature, the East Coast Park forms a crucial spine to the cycling network along the East Coast, enabling long-distance commuter cycling. It's the only way I can link up with the Bedok Park connector at this point. Due to the lack of alternative East-West axes, New Upper Changi Road, Upper East Coast Road and Marine Parade Road all do not feature cycling paths in this day and age.
Here, I pass some public housing looking blocks to my right, which are rather special. These point blocks dating back to the late 1970s form a part of Lagoon View, one of only three estates which was built specially to house civil servants. This particular estate is owned by the Ministry of Finance. It sits next to Laguna Park, a middle-income housing project built around the same time by the Housing and Urban Development Company. A noteworthy thing about these two projects is that the residents that lived here had a high-profile petition against the Singapore Bus Services in 1979 for wanting to build the Marine Parade Bus Terminal along Siglap Link due to so-called pollution concerns. The former bus terminal was still eventually built in 1981. I will link up into East Coast Park by the Lagoon View underpass, which I also travelled through in the video for the western sector of Bedo. Unlike pedestrian overhead bridges, I can pedal through pedestrian underpasses, which will go a little way in making the connection to East Coast Park more seamless. By the way, do let me know in the comments section below whether you want to see a video series that exclusively features the Park Connector Network. While I do try to incorporate them into my cycling tours videos, which aim to cover cycling paths by area, it does unfortunately mean that I fail to provide a full picture of an entire park connector within a single video, as it may travel through large distances, such as in the case of the East Coast Park, and I'm not sure if it's the best way of viewing the park connector network. For example, I will be entering East Coast Park by Area E in this video, and leaving by Area G. Now, the interesting thing about this shed path is that it used to be a cycle track for pedal cyclists before it got realigned. The original portion of the cycle track will lay on my left and merge into this path I am here, where you see a center line reappearing today. Unlike shed paths, which are meant to be used by joggers, bikers, skateboarders, scooter riders, rollerbladers, and so on, the cycle track designation meant that this path was only meant for cycling. However, like many cycling paths today, they often wind up not being used in the manner they are designed. Already in the 1980s, there were staying on track issues playing out between cyclists and pedestrians that would now happen all across Singapore today. As early as 1982, enough cyclists and joggers were on the wrong track in the East Coast Park that the Parks and Recreation Department launched a campaign to urge the public to use the right track. And in 1989, park rangers were deployed to advise park users to comply with such rules. Despite that, over the years, there were complaints from members of the public which made it into newspaper form letters. For example, a complaint from a harassed jogger in 1985 led to a retort by a harassed cyclist a few days later. Another cyclist laments about untrained and reckless cyclists in 1989, resulting in a retort from a pedestrian. There used to be a third distinct group of people as well, the skateboarder, which didn't quite belong either here or there back then, since there wasn't a concept of active mobility yet. A complaint by a member of the public in the same year asking to crack down on skateboarding in this park led to a snarky reply by a skateboarder, insulting his mother. Oof, that's savage! Unfortunately, I won't be travelling along East Coast Park long enough for me to read all the entertaining forum letters dating from the 1980s to the modern day. But just as we have a cyclist crash into people in 2023, they have also crashed into people in 1987. You get the point, some things just never change in this park. 
What has changed though, is that today the cycle track is no longer a dedicated path for cyclists, but a 25km per hour speed limit shared path meant for all. Do also discuss in the comment section below if you think this is an improvement or not. In the meantime, I will stop talking so that you can enjoy the soundscapes of the park, and we will reconvene again after I leave the East Coast Park through a pedestrian underpass leading to the Bedok Park Connector. I emerged from the tunnel portal only to find myself in the middle of nowhere, right next to Laguna Golf Course. I suppose this provides added convenience for golfers who frequent this course, but having the park connector skirt around the golf course and Bedok Camp, a military camp, instead of cutting through the golf course along Sungai Bedok results in an additional 2.5km detour to get to the private housing estate of Eastwood. Given the detour I mentioned earlier, it would have been nice if an additional pedestrian underpass was built around here, where the bend is, which would cut short the cycling journey by nearly 1.8 kilometers and make commuter cycling for residents along Upper East Coast Road here more viable. Alternatively, it would have been even better if there were continuous bike paths installed along Upper East Coast Road itself.
Anyways, being a path in the middle of nowhere, there isn't much to note here. Just keep a lookout for puddles on the pavement, caused by a slow moving flow of water from the patch of grass to my left. Just to be safe, it would be a good idea to slow down a distance before the puddle to avoid skidding. Path diversions will continue next to the Upper East Coast Bus Terminal, thanks to the construction of the Downtown Line Stage 3 extension and Thomson East Coast Line Stage 5 to a future Sungai Bedok MRT station. For the most part, the paths are diverted pretty nicely, with a wide passageway serving as the interim shared path that isn't encumbered with dangerous obstacles to cyclists along the way. The path does admittedly get narrower as I enter East Wood Road, where the path is diverted. Landed housing estates are known to have wide footpaths, and what narrow footpaths they have are often obstructed by rubbish bins, which are insensitively placed in a manner that obstructs pedestrians. But if you can negotiate around them, the signages that are placed at various turning points do provide a pretty good picture of the diverted path I should take to get to the park connector. Anyway, I am now back on the Bedok Park Connector. This park connector was one of the earliest ones in Singapore, completed around the year 2000, as a nice white path following the drainage reserve of Sungai Bedok. Today, it is seen as part of the Eastern Corridor, a north-south system of paths in the eastern region of Singapore, connecting Pasiris Park to the East Coast Park. With a construction project in the way though, the East Coast Integrated Depot, the stretch of the park connector behind me will likely stay closed for quite a while more, perhaps to the end of 2024 at the earliest. There have also been recent works to build a parallel park connector on the east bank of Sungai Bedok, which is currently open. In fact, if you are watching this video the day it has been uploaded, a 600 meter stretch of the park connector along the eastern bank of Sungai Bedok has just been opened yesterday morning, completing the eastern corridor. However, it will not be featured in this video as the path is separated from the landed housing to my left by a waterway, making it less accessible for bicycle commuting.
Earlier, I passed a Eastwood Park playground, and once again this park connector minders a little as I approach Bedok Ria Crescent playground, doing its job of connecting mini parks together. As I approach a spaghetti of viaducts with railway tracks, I will have to make a slight detour along New Upper Changi Road to get to the road crossing and continue on a cycling path on the opposite side of this roadway. The paths on both sides of the bridge are pretty narrow, with steep grades to get on and off it, so it would be nice if they could be widened, either by making the width of the bridge larger or by repurposing road lanes from the roadway. I also don't like how the pavement of the park connector joins smoothly to the roadway, leaving a small stretch of the footpath unprotected from pedestrians. Understandably, this is to enable maintenance vehicles to drive directly onto the park connector, but it will probably be better to install these yellow barriers to separate the roadway from the footpath, then from the footpath and the park connector. This questionable cycling path has already been covered in the video for the northern sector, so I will not be commenting on it again. Overall, I would say that the cycling network of Bedok is quite sprawling, but it sure isn't very cohesive at this point. There are many branches and dead ends, and it doesn't quite cover the whole town. Some of it is due to existing construction projects, like the new platform in Tanamera and the East Coast Integrated Depot, which results in the need for detours. I'm sure the situation will look quite different in as little as months from now. This will be a problem in some of my videos from here on. Massive construction projects in Amokyo, Pasiris, Pongo, and Tampanese will quickly make my cycling videos out of date. Still, there's heavy lifting being done here by park connectors which were built decades earlier. Bedok is, after all, rather fortunate in that it has park connectors built into it from very early on, thanks to its flat terrain and straight canals. But this makes the process of making videos to cover the cycling network here a tricky one for me, since I also had to feature commutable routes on park connectors. I guess this is why we wind up with such a weird video which could have easily ended midway through, so I would like to make an apology if this isn't what you are looking for. As for the cycling paths that do exist, some of them are weird. I haven't seen any segregated paths in other towns that are so windy and hilly like Badok South Road, which takes off-road to a whole new level. However it goes, eventually I approach Tanamera Station, where this video comes to an end. Do leave your thoughts on the cycling network here, and feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so. You can also support me using the super thanks function of YouTube. This is Transit Evolution, signing off.